Sure. So the ensemble study um, is a study of using ocrelizumab, which is a B-cell depleting therapy, um, early in MS as a first-line disease-modifying therapy. W one of the key questions in MS right now is um, if we can um, eliminate or significantly reduce bad long-term outcomes if we treat early with highly effective therapies. And so we're very interested in marching back the use of high efficacy therapies. Um, I think when high efficacy therapies were first available, number one, there were some safety issues with the first ones um, that were out, and so people were reluctant to use them. But now um, that we have newer therapies, and I say newer, but um, um, medications like ocalism have been on the market for five years, and so um, they're really not that new anymore. Um, but they, uh, um, I think, are being thought of as first-line agents in more and more patients because we've always had this um, um, knowledge that early treatment is better in MS, that there are processes that start off early in the disease that um, once they get started, they're really, really hard to stop and, and they leave permanent damage. And so um, early treatment is good and it only is, I think, an extension of that that early effective treatment would, would be even better probably. And so now that we have the arrival of highly effective therapies that are um, uh, not just highly effective, but they're also very safe, um, that's the piece that's really made people, I think, embrace high efficacy therapy as an idea, even as a first line treatment. And um, so the ensemble study is a formal phase 3B clinical trial of ocrelizumab, um, open label. Um, so taking people um, um, the criteria were within three years of diagnosis. Um, in reality, the group that was enrolled is about one year uh, into symptom onset, um, and so one year after diagnosis on average, um, and uh, with some disease activity in the last year, so either a relapse or, or two contrast-enhancing lesions in the last year, and then um, placing them on ocrelizumab as their first-line disease-modifying therapy and following them. And the primary outcome of the study is a four-year outcome, which um, you know, uh, we're actually grateful to have a four-year study um, because it's um, most of the studies that we can get um, uh, kind of proposed and funded are two-year studies. So a four-year study with um, the primary outcome measure being NIDA or no evidence of disease activity at four years. The upshot is that um, no evidence of disease activity um, uh, was met in two-thirds of the patients, uh, over 66% of the patients at four years. Um, met, uh, met criteria for NIDA. And NIDA, for those who um, might not be as familiar with it, um, is a composite outcome measure that combines um, three of our, the most common things that we monitor in clinic and also in clinical trials. One is um, uh, no relapses. The second criterion is no new MRI lesions, and that includes T2 lesions and gadolinium enhancing lesions. And the third is no um, disability progression, or in clinical trials, it's EDSS progression, but in clinic, it gets measured different ways sometimes. Um, and so any um, patient that has all three of those um, qualifies as NIDA, or no evidence of disease activity. And it's the closest thing we have to kind of a true remission measure in relapsing or remitting MS. And um, in the, uh, the ensemble study, at four years, 66% um, uh, of the patients um, met NIDA, which is very high. Um, kind of the interpretation, my interpretation of that is that um, yeah, this is a higher rate than we've seen previously um, in, uh, in trials of other agents. And um, part of it is that we have intervened early in this trial. And, and I think you're gonna begin to see emergence of a couple different categories of evidence, hopefully. One would be observational studies, this contributes, I think, to the clinical trial data, um, but also we'll have some randomized clinical trial data randomizing patients to um, high efficacy therapy first line versus more of an escalation approach, what we would say like saving our best agents for later. Um, and um, we're really excited because um, there are a couple of trials that are just about done enrolling now that deliver MS trial and the treat MS trials, which will formally randomize people among these different treatment approaches. and will have outcomes at three years and at two years in those um, to, um, to guide us about what we should be doing with all of our patients. Um, one of the interesting phenomena in neurology is that things kind of um, start slow and tend to catch, catch on. 
and I think probably sitting here even a couple of years ago, you could have gotten almost every MS neurologist on board with using high efficacy therapies in their most severe patients with MS. Um, and over these last few years, um, the field has really shifted to say, well, it's not, you know, it's good for the um, patients who have more severe MS and a lot of disease activity, but we're beginning to shift it into earlier use. And data like those from the ensemble study, I think, help to contribute um, to that effort.